Hey guys, it's Michael here from FlySight. Uh, in the next few videos, we're going to talk about how to configure your FlySight. To start, let's plug in the FlySight and see what's on the drive. When you plug in your FlySight, it should come up like a USB disk. If it doesn't come up automatically, you may need to locate the drive manually. The FlySight's drive will usually contain folders uh, that are named according to the date and contain log files. Uh, an audio folder that includes all of the audio files that FlySight uses. Uh, a file called flysight.txt, which contains uh, information about your FlySight. And a file called config.txt, uh, which contains all the configuration data for your FlySight. When you turn on your FlySight, the first thing it does is read the configuration data contained in the config.txt file. Uh, this is a text file, which you can edit manually or you can use the FlySight configurator, uh, which makes things a little bit easier. Let's take a quick look at the configuration file. Uh, first, uh, double-click on the file to open it. On Windows, it'll probably open in Notepad. In Mac, uh, it should open in TextEdit. The configuration file contains a list of settings, each with a name and a value. On each line, everything after the semicolon is ignored by the FlySight. Uh, you can find a short description of each setting here. If you're adventurous, uh, you can configure the FlySight by editing this file manually. One way to test your settings on the ground is to change the threshold velocities to zero. And those are located all the way down here. That way, the FlySight will produce sounds even if you're not in freefall. Don't worry about damaging your FlySight by adding this file. Uh, in the worst case, you can go back to factory settings just by deleting the configuration file, unplugging your FlySight, and turning it on and back off. This will recreate the original config.txt. That's it. Uh, in the next few videos, we'll take a closer look at configuration using the FlySight configurator, which is really just a graphical interface for editing that configuration file. As always, if you have any questions you'd like to have answered, uh, please share them in the comments. Thanks for watching.